So, welcome to the presentation of the International Society of Boredom Studies and thank you for your interest in this emerging project. I'm really, really excited to be here introducing our society after some time working on it and, and devoting our efforts to make this dream true. So, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the short history of this, of this project. It was uh, three years ago, when I was a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University, that I was contacted by Agustin de la Peña, a developmental psychophysiologist specialized in sleep disorders and, and sleep medicine, who had been teaching and, and researching in places such as the Department of, of Psychiatry at the University of California in Los Angeles and at the University of Texas Medical School and is now emeritus of the American Academic, uh, Academy of Sleep Medicine. So he had a very clear idea of what he wanted, to establish a center of, of boredom studies in North America to have a point of encounter for all those researching on boredom from a, a variety of disciplines. But as a fellow and, and a foreigner in Boston, such a possibility was not at my, at my fingertips. And I have also to come back to Spain sooner or later. However, I started thinking of other ways to create spaces for boredom studies researchers. I then met Marius, who had been the sole organizers, uh, organizer of the three first editions of the boredom conference. He had already promoted, in fact, a marvelous space for us, the researchers interested in boredom studies. However, I envisioned something else, not a physical center, which uh, was impossible from my, from my position, neither a, a conference, but something such a network of the specialists in which we could feel our studies represented, promoted, and shared with a broad community a place to which researchers on boredom could go to be updated and to find conversations on this topic to join, or place to be shared with the world. So the idea of an international society of boredom studies was born then. After coming back to Spain and establish myself in, my, in Madrid, I decided it was the time to start working on such a project. So to the initial team, composed by Agustin, Marius, and I myself, Dr. Andrea Serpidoro and Vaignan Valentilbur joined after some conversations. So things being so, in October 2020, we all decided to legally register the International Society of Boredom Studies with Dr. De La Peña as a treasurer, Dr. Valentilbur as vice secretary, Dr. Finkelstein as secretary, Dr. El Pidoro as vice president and I myself as president. So I want to thank my team for its commitment with this project. This, this wouldn't have been possible without you four. The purpose of the International Society of Boredom Studies is basically to promote and disseminate multidisciplinary research on boredom. Through so a network of experts, I, it will facilitate the advancement and distribution of knowledge concerning Borno. And it will be able to give visibility and access to scientific papers on Borno published uh, by researchers worldwide and to disseminate information regarding activities related to the study of Borno. So now, uh, please, Andrea and Bainan uh, will tell you more about the vision and the mission of the International Society of Boredom Studies, the ISBS. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you, Josefa. I don't know if you want to go ahead. I can say, I'll be brief. Um, go for it. I'm, it's all right. Yeah. First, I just want to, you know, Josefa is way too kind and generous. Um, I did very little. Um, so that needs to be said there. Um, she did, from my perspective, it seemed a tremendous amount of hard work. And, you know, registering a society like this, it takes a lot of work. So I want to take this moment just to thank her um, 
um, for all the work. So thank you very much for making this possible. Um, it wouldn't not have been possible without your work. Um, you know, and when we all share similar ideas about what the society should look or, you know, we were all pluralist in our thinking about society, but we want to have a space, and this is kind of the aim and the idea behind the society, that different researchers from different disciplines can come together and have a space um, in which they can communicate ideas, exchange ideas, um, and get feedback in some ways. Um, and we're thinking about different ways in which the society can um, better disseminate, better publicize work on, on boredom. So this, I don't know if Wasaf is going to talk more about this, about a possibility of a newsletter or maybe something more formal than that or in addition to a newsletter. Um, but the impetus behind um, the society is, or the rationale is that there's a lot of work going around on boredom, a lot of important work. We all think we believe in the importance of boredom um, and we want to try to bring that in, to kind of centralize it, not in a, centralized might not be the right word because it suggests that we're kind of um, giving too much prominence and, and role in the society, but just to help people to better connect with others. And so I think that is the main aim of this society. And we're still thinking um, about what might be the best way of doing that. But, uh, you know, inviting more people, um, growing, and just maintaining, I think, what was exhibited throughout the conference, um, this spirit of being welcoming and having a genuine good time engaging in thoughts and research about Bordeaux. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so just to follow up on that, I mean, uh, Andreas, you really uh, said it all. I, I, I want to reemphasize just how thankful uh, we should be for uh, Osefa to organize this because she, she is very grateful or very nicely including us, but I don't even speak Spanish. So when, when we had to apply for this organization, you can imagine what my role was. It was uh, rather trivial. It, it, it really uh, was uh, Josefa who, who put uh, so much into this and, uh, to make this uh, really work. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, we have uh, uh, now this is the fifth time of this particular conference and you can see there are so many disciplines represented, where are so many different locations. It, I think that just speaks to the need to find this central uh, society where we uh, can all find each other. Um, I think it's important to bring together and, uh, and to discuss these ideas. But uh, one of the strengths I, I see also at this conference today is that uh, we don't necessarily all agree with each other. It, it might not necessarily be that we think the other is wrong, but I, I heard some perspectives on boredom that I that were just alien to me, that, that I have to think about and figure out what it means. And, and that kind of, um, you know, the fact that there are some inconsistencies in the way we approach this is actually, I think, going to be very helpful in, in sharpening our approaches a bit. Um, I, I don't know if I ever admitted this to Marius, who, who suggested at the start that somehow sociology and psychology might be at odds uh, with each other. Uh, I actually started research on boredom after reading Barblet's paper on, on boredom and uh, social meaning. So I was inspired by sociology to start studying boredom as an example of, of interdisciplinary work. Uh, from a perspective of uh, psychology, I, I think it, it's quite clear that within psychology we need a lot more understanding and nuance in, in what we call boredom. We, we briefly talked, uh, John uh, mentioned boredom proneness as a concept that everyone uses but no one really seems to understand. And, and here other perspectives are going to be really important. Psychologists have the tendency to define what they measure using their measurements, um, which is very circular. Boredom proneness is what the boredom proneness scale measures, uh, which is very tautological. On the other hand, I think uh, psychology is one of the uh, quanti uh, 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 quantitative sciences in this interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary society might offer uh, an opportunity for those from other areas to, to see their, their propositions tested empirically, right? And Andreas, you talked about these associations between boredom and, uh, and uh, socioeconomic status. These are all things that can be tested. Um, and, and by gathering different experts, uh, we'll, we might be able to do this. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to include other disciplines as well that are not yet represented. Uh, Isabella, you mentioned uh, artists as well. 
uh, there is a lot of work also in neuropsychology uh, on the nature of boredom. Uh, uh, there must be uh, also work in perhaps behavioral economics, on, on why do people exert effort versus not, or something like that. This, and, and maybe by making this organization visible, we might be able to attract those people who might have been sitting there lonely in their own office and now finally uh, find a group that they uh, belong to and that will welcome them. So thanks again for, for all uh, your attention. And, uh, and again, Josefa, thank you for basically leaving uh, everything and, and truly serving as our president here. Okay, this is, uh, this is my time. So I want also thank uh, Josefa to making this all up. This was a brilliant uh, moment uh, for me when we were contacted by Augustine. Uh, and I see this society as a continuation of my uh, initial uh, motive for, for conference. Yeah, I felt alone. Yeah, I started to think about uh, uh, researching boredom and no one <laughs> was e even interested and they are just mocking me. Oh, you are so bored, you're, you study boredom. So uh, I felt alone. So this is what Initial uh, initial idea of the conference, yeah, to reach out. Maybe there are some people who thought about similar things. Maybe not in similar ways, but still also find uh, boredom so somehow significant and worth uh, researching. So I see this uh, society as a continuation of this initial idea, yeah, but uh, by other means. So this is, I suppose, uh, highly important and now i should present uh, our web page very shortly um of course uh, but still uh probably many of you uh go to our website by those who uh, don't have this opportunity uh here we have uh, the basic information about uh, the society maybe the most boring ones here we have also our members uh, as you see there are uh, several but uh, today is the official <laughs> announcement of the society but uh, yeah we live as a people in the society and we contacting people so many people wanted to join the before this official inauguration uh, so here uh, is maybe the first uh, role that uh, we can uh, count <laughs> ourselves as boredom researchers and have this maybe basic information uh, with whom we might uh, collaborate because I suppose this uh, network can serve uh, to further our studies like uh, international studies, uh, grant proposition about boredom. Maybe this is the, the right time. Uh, we have also news uh, like call for papers. This is uh, highly important. If you have some call for papers, uh, we uh, will publish all that we found or uh, you can send us the information. So this is also the uh, aim of the society yeah, to, to make this space when we can go or we, have, uh, we will have the newsletter. Yeah, so we have these uh, uh, ways to inform each other about uh, call for papers, our new work, uh, new releases in boredom studies that might uh, have uh, be interesting for, for our members. Here we have also uh, the, the new web page of the conference. Some of you maybe know the previous, <laughs> the previous uh, web page uh, of the conference, but uh, it's become <laughs> um too expensive this is one point uh, so it uh, uh didn't work anyway but still uh from now on the conference will be uh, organized directly by the society as one of uh, uh, its uh, purposes uh, as this uh, physical hopefully physical space to networking to uh, have this discussions like we have uh, for uh, these uh, three days. Uh, yeah, and uh, here uh, we also have this visual representation of our network. Uh, yeah, the, so the map, we can always go with uh, close up and see are there any people nearby with whom we can contact, uh, have uh, uh, 
uh, research with or something like this. Yeah, so hopefully uh, the more of us will be in the society, yeah, the, the more, more dense these dots will be. Um, yeah, and another uh, idea for this uh, web page is uh, uh, publication. So uh, creating a database for boredom uh, connected uh, papers, uh, papers, chapters, maybe books as well. Uh, so this is the project. This is uh, ongoing project. We will uh, we plan uh, we plan this. Um, yeah, we have also media lectures and uh, must read. This is also uh, mostly uh, not papers uh, like scientific papers, but uh, more media stuff. And uh, maybe uh, last important uh, thing: how to join the society. It's very easy and it's free, free of charge because we don't have. Uh, uh, this is the not the aim of the society yeah, to have money. Uh, we have treasurer, but, but because this is uh, for purely legal reasons, uh, so we don't we have to have the treasurer. Uh, but this is free of charge, and uh, you can join the society just by uh, writing uh, as uh, um, uh, your intent uh, to join. You can email us or you can contact us uh, by this uh, for, for formula uh, at the web page. Okay, I suppose this is it as for the uh, web page. Uh, Josefa, please uh, go uh, back to the, to the presentation. I have uh, at least one more uh, one more slide. Uh, yeah, about the future plans of some of them, uh, you know. So the next uh, conference, uh, uh, I plan, or I plan, I used to plan uh, this conference uh, the, to be each two years. So I suppose that uh, we can arrange it <laughs> uh, with, uh, with Josefa and as a society uh, to have this meeting every each, uh, to, every two years. Yeah, uh, one year is maybe not, so many time but uh, so much time but two years uh, during the two years uh, period you can research a lot having new publications new ideas this is maybe uh, good to have this as a as a steady thing yeah because you you see there were four four year uh, four years uh, without conference yeah this is because I was a sole organizer so I must uh, to defend my PhD so this was a uh, collision uh, in this part and then I met Josefa and now we have this uh, comeback of the of the conference yeah another uh, Josefa yeah uh, yeah, this, uh, this is YouTube channel of the society. We start, uh, of course, with uh, the recordings uh, from this uh, very conference, and but then we will expand. I hope <laughs> with this uh, with this public representation of the of the society. Yeah, that uh, YouTube is a very popular uh, social media, so we should be there. Uh, okay, the next. Uh, yeah, the creation of database, I said it already. Uh, we will work on this, uh, but this is a lot of work. And another, this is my dream, yeah, because uh, Josefa's dream was fulfilled, uh, has been fulfilled, uh, yeah, the establishment of the society. So my <laughs> my dream, personal dream, but maybe uh, you find it uh, useful, uh, I need it, uh, is the uh, foundation of Journal of Boredom Studies because our publications are so scattered <laughs> around many different venues, different uh, journals, and so on. This is sometimes... Uh, really hard to find them. Uh, so maybe this is the time at least to start thinking about our own place for, for some publications, yeah, the forum for our discussions. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the, the end from me, but I hope that maybe you have some questions, maybe suggestions, some ideas what uh, we can do more uh, about what we can think of. Uh, yeah. Well, how to use this uh, this society for further benefits uh, of the network? So we are open uh, uh, for your suggestions.
Yes, Vinon, please. So just a, a quick question. So in the me member overview, you see all these nice pictures of, of people. Um, so if people sign up to be a member, um, uh, will we contact them just to, to get their image as well? Because it, it looks quite nice to have a visual impression of everyone there, just, just for clarification. <laughs> Oh, this was comment to Josefa, yes, that... Uh... Uh, or, yeah, anyway, I assume that, that we can simply do that, right? <laughs> so, the, the only thing you have to do is to, to send an email to this uh, email address, and I will reply with a little form, in with, a very short form, in which you have to tell me which um, publications, as a member, you will, you want to be uploaded to the website with lectures that already appear on YouTube. <laughs> because uh, since we are not, uh, not charging anything for being a member, uh, I cannot spend <laughs> I cannot spend money on the on the website too. So uh, the only the only thing I can do is to uh, upload uh, videos from YouTube. So I will ask you about what about your research on boredom you want to be on the website. You want to share with the rest of the people. So what I need is your publications, just the links or just the, the reference, your photo um, and your links, the, the links to your videos. Uh, I'm as, uh, also asking for your mentions on the media. And I think this is all your vinculation, your affiliation to a university or you are an independent scholar, there is no problem. Uh, your email, your contact, and that's all. That's all for now. Yeah, so this is, can be a form, additional form to, to promote your research. Uh, yeah. Yes, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Lizzie uh, Burns. Wants. Sorry, uh, I think one of the most important things of the of the ISBS is that part of the network because of of course uh, in the section of publications you have the the, the articles the papers books uh, chapters uh, the members want to see on the website and you have the the possibility if it, if it, this is not in open access okay i gave the possibility of asking the author for access if you are also a member but uh, apart from that, I think the most important part of the society is this section of the network, in which you can go and click on one uh, bullet and just see the contact of the, the people, uh, the people that that are um, working on board on worldwide. So if you are planning to have an anesthesia, a research, uh, anesthesia as a visiting researcher somewhere, uh, you have just to go there and see, okay, I'm, I would like to work on Bordon in Australia. Who is working on Bordon in Australia? So it's so simple in this sense. You, are, you, you don't have to go to the internet and start searching Bordon, Australia. Perhaps that person is not is no longer working on board, and as I, I myself has has a spirit have experience on time. So, yeah, please, uh, Lizzie. Oh, thank you! Congratulations! I mean, this is amazing. This is just so wonderful. Um, I was just wondering, actually, for for the website, whether there's a way to have almost a kind of an educational sort of page to help people understand about boredom in a way that people would understand um so because i guess the research is in such detail potentially but some kind of you know accessible I mean, teachers for example might find that interesting or any i don't know top tips as to how to <laughs> help with boredom i i don't know whether that's something that could be considered it would obviously be for you the researchers to have that latest understanding but whether you could make it accessible i think would be really wonderful So you mean some popular, uh, popular uh, articles like well, in blogs? Yeah, or, or almost on your website, just a sort of uh, an accessible sort of summary of of what's behind boredom. Yeah, just just on on your page as well. 
but I don't know, does that make sense? I mean, most societies would have, I don't know if it's immunology explaining about the, the immune system and in an accessible way. So I was just wondering whether there's an equivalent that you could do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's a, a wonderful idea. And uh, Annie has also uh, plans for, for podcasts, yeah? Like to, to eliminate journalists in a way, uh, yeah. And, the idea of a, of a series of podcasts is amazing. I, I didn't even think about that. But I, I was just, just shocked by, the, by this idea, Annie. Thank you so very much. We, we don't, brought down your idea. Thank you. So we now, we now should start with, uh, with the mm, newsletter perhaps, <laughs> and, and setting uh, the first steps of the, of the Board on Studies Journal, which is also an amazing idea, and let's see what happens. But it's a, it's a good idea too, in order to, to fill our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah. So one thing at a time, but yeah, we have a few huge plans. And thank you for these ideas. We cannot pay you any for your for the rise of your idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, John John Eastwood, uh, please. Yeah, lo lots of great ideas here, and uh, just following up on on the one idea about um, accessible information. So we could have uh, what's often referred to as plain language summaries of of the research uh, outputs, right? And and there are various uh, sort of systematic ways of mobilizing knowledge. And some of the granting agencies in Canada anyway, really like to see that uh, researchers who are receiving public funding are making some effort to disseminate their knowledge more broadly. And the society could could help in that regard as being a space for people to go to, to, to read plain language summaries. Um, um, and anyway, I just wanted to, to thank the organizers. I mean, it was uh, such a, a great conference and uh, so much leadership and vision and Josefa and Andreas and Vinand and Marius, thank you so much for all that you've done for for the field and uh, for this conference in particular. Um, one idea I just wanted to float very quickly was um, personally, I really value the conversations and the discussion sometimes even more so than 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 hearing more formal presentations and uh, i think every other year for a conference makes a lot of sense to me i wonder if there might be opportunities for more frequent gathering in a virtual space to dialogue uh, and that could be as unstructured as an open space for people to just come and talk and without any any plan uh, sort of uh, guidance or planning or it could be, you know, people maybe giving a talk, someone who says, I've got something I'm working on, I want to give a talk. And then and then there could be conversation centered around that, that presentation. So I would personally value uh, a space to get together um, to have conversation. And uh, I think that could happen virtually. It doesn't uh, replace the face to face, but it, it uh, can still be very valuable. And that's something that I would like to see. Thank you, Jan. Uh, yes, in fact, I, I was thinking that we can organize Twitch sessions from time to time just to spend an hour or so during the weekend uh, talking of boredom. And of course, uh, when I mention lectures, uh, it's, it's not only lectures. If you are working on a paper or, or, or a Anyways, uh, you can record yourself, and if you are a member of the society, you can send your the recording to me, and I will upload to the to the YouTube channel for its promotion. So it's not necessarily uh, recordings from your past conferences, lectures, and so on, but you you can say, okay, I I already published this paper, and I what I want to promote it a little bit. So I'm going to record myself uh, in order to, to upload a, a video to the YouTube channel. But the idea of, of organizing Twitch series uh, sessions from time to time, it's also beautiful. 
Don't you think so? Yes, Andreas. Huh? I, I love that idea. I think it's I, I think it's it's excellent, and it's a way of just keeping the conversation going um, instead of waiting. It's less work for the organizers, so you know if people don't have to organize. We can just schedule dates. You know, I don't know how often. It doesn't have to be that often. And who's ever interested, we can join and have a conversation. Or if we want to make it slightly more structured, we can have some broad topics of conversation. So it's not just about everything about boredom, but boredom and X. And then, you know, we can it can be an hour or two. We can just join and see how long it goes. I think that's great. And, you know, one of the... One of the goals, maybe unstated goal, but it should be, you know, I think it's all on our minds is to in increase kind of diversity of people participating in our conversations, in our meetings. And I think the online setting helps a lot. So if we want to attract more people from a variety of backgrounds, we want to make it as accessible as possible. And perhaps not requiring them, you know, to maybe the informal setting will be the virtual informal setting might be even more in, in welcoming for people who are like well, i'm not sure if i want to i'm just gonna show up and see if there's anything of interest to me um yeah mm -hmm. uh, yes and michael want to say something yeah just briefly well firstly you know i, I applaud this initiative and i think it's a very timely uh thing to do and i think it's going to be a great success so yeah it's fantastic um, just on the question of conferences, I think every two years is a great idea. A yearly conference is a very difficult thing to pull off. Um, but I think the question on everyone's mind is we live in post-normal times. Will it be an online conference or will it be a physical you know, conference? If the latter, I mean, I know this is a huge amount of work, but obviously it's a lot more work to organize something in a physical location. So have you given any thoughts to that? Uh, yeah, would you have contingency plans for if there are other pandemics or other ways of this pandemic or whatever. I mean, this is very difficult to plan this sort of thing. Uh, a year ago, I would have said online conferences are a stupid idea. I never want to participate in this, but this has actually changed my mind. This is the first one. I, I've seen talks online and so on, but th this is the first one I've participated in and it's, it's been a great experience. So, you know, I don't know. It's a big, it's a big question whether just planning a plan from now for online or whether to actually take seriously whether this can be a physical event. Uh, obviously, there are advantages and disadvantages to that. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you. Basically, we we think uh, about conferences each two years uh, as a physical uh, experiences, and mm -hmm. but uh, these virtual discussions would be the great uh, uh, in between <laughs> maintenance uh, of our of our uh, network. So it's a good uh, idea have physical conferences every two years and between them yeah we can meet virtually because yeah we have ocean between us and, uh, and many other uh, difficulties yeah i'm almost forget about this uh, in spain we can apply for public financiation for for public funding uh, when we have one year uh, with the society working. So after our first, our first uh, birthday, I, I'm gonna ask for this for sure. <laughs> Just in case we can, I don't know how, how many, how much money are we going to, to receive? Because it depends on the public function or public cultural function you, you give to the society. <laughs> So perhaps a boredom society is not the, the best example in this sense. I, I, I don't think so, but uh, I'm not sure for my politicians. But uh, perhaps we can we can have uh, funding enough as as to create as to uh, create this uh, boredom studies journal uh, in paper <laughs> or something like this. Uh, I prefer not to figure out in which I. I will I will spend the money because I don't have any for now. <laughs> but, but this is uh, another plan for the future. Yeah, and maybe we should uh, think about uh, different language versions of uh, of uh, <laughs> website, like Spanish version for your ministry and uh, yeah, these grant givers. Yeah. So there. Oh, Jan. I just quickly following up. 
uh, on your comment about the public funding, I mean, there may be ways to to think about how the society can be relevant uh, to the local community or to the broader community. Um, and maybe there are some creative ways to think about that question. I mean, the immediate sort of more obvious thoughts are, you know, preparing public talks that would run uh, along with the conference. Um, that's sort of a, a sort of sort of a low hanging fruit. I'm sure we could be more creative and it's circling back to our earlier question about the interface with the broader public and, uh, you know, being relevant and uh, providing something of meaning. And that might also help with the issue of the public funding. Now we will think about this. So Andres? Yeah, I just wanted to echo Annie's point in the chat. Um, it's expensive traveling. Um, putting everything aside, it costs a lot of money. So um, if I, you know, I, I actually really dig the online conferences more than I thought I, I would. Um, they are, they give you a lot of freedom and they can, a lot of people are there. You know, maybe I'm a bit antisocial in person, so that's one of the reasons. Um, but it, it helps people to be able to participate. So if we are serious about having a physical location, I can, I can clearly see the benefits of having a physical location, you know, people getting together, having coffee, discussing over these matters. Um, we should make sure that we allow some kind of virtual participation. So I just wanted to, I think that that will allow us to grow as a society and be more inclusive. Uh, yeah, there was uh, an idea to uh, record the physical conference, so it will it can be streaming as well, maybe uh, not only recording but streaming, so they could participate in real uh, time, not only just uh, go to YouTube channel afterwards. So yeah, I, I think this is a good idea to to uh, have this mixed uh, um, meetings. Yeah physical for some and for others just virtual uh, participation hybrid conferences are the future <laughs> yeah we have two years to to manage this <laughs> yeah yeah it's more work <laughs> but uh, yeah michael yeah, please. you know after all we have after all, we have, we have funding from my mm -hmm. uh, but just for the keynotes so it's very expensive you are right yeah, please, Michael. Yeah, no, I think I think hybrid conferences are the future, especially in these these times, for sure. Um, so I, I vote for that. I had a question about how how the society decides on the, the venue for the the next conference if it's if it's a physical event. Is there a vote, or how would it, how did, how does this work? Normally, in the conferences I've been to, uh, you know, at the this sort of session at the end, you sort of have a vote, and and people bring proposals. So there's two or three different competing proposals and then there's a vote of the society so mm -hmm. i don't know how it will work but. yeah i think that to avoid boredom it should be different places each time <laughs> i think we, we both uh, we both didn't even start thinking about the, the physical place just in case uh, coronavirus <laughs> start again <laughs> or no, not start because it's not done but uh, just in case not to to make too many too, ma too many plans as it happened this time, <laughs> don't you yeah. think, Marius? Have you any so, idea? Uh, no, but uh, we also need uh, the organizer uh, uh, at this place. So if this uh, in uh, Warsaw, I should be there. If this is Madrid, Josefa is there, and uh, we need we would need one organizer at the spot. So this is difficult. Yeah, but we never thought about uh, the, the locality of the next, yeah. Um, so we will see how future goes with these pandemics, with many, many, many other things. Well, if, if we have funding enough, perhaps we can we can uh, ask for for an hotel room, uh, no, not room, but I don't know the, the word, the word, but do you, do you understand what I mean? <laughs> We can celebrate the, the conference in an hotel or something like this, uh, in a conference uh, place, place uh, wherever. 
I want to, I want to come back to the to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> especially especially we have many boredom researchers in North America in general. So Canada yeah. or, or United States. Yeah, uh, perhaps. United States of, of, yeah, but this is a long way right now. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we cannot answer this this question. Uh, okay, and we have Isabella uh, also raising uh, hand. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, just quickly, this is a half of joke and a half of idea, perhaps uh, two of them. First. First, uh, think about the indicators. I'm completely against all what is measuring. You know me, I'm qualitative. But I see my colleagues doing amazing career when they're producing indicators of boredom and this, you know, in which country you are less bored or more bored, etc., etc. This is thing, commercial thing, yes, for me. Uh, certainly other colleagues would uh, uh, prove that I'm completely wrong in this approach. However, uh, it, when you will apply for money, it, it could be very useful because that thing is speaking to a lot of people. And second one, someone put in a chat that uh, some uh, companies, pharma companies, look for pills and they didn't fund. So we can use a slogan, they failed, but we found the responses uh, or the ideas about how to avoid boredom or something like this. So this is kind of joke, but however, the money are there, uh, pharma, uh, pills, and indicators, uh, everything that I don't believe in. But <laughs> we need to be, um, how to say, uh, pragmatic, yes? And uh, who knows, perhaps uh, it is true that it could be a pill for it and indicator, so thank you. So maybe our next virtual session should be about these uh, thoughts uh, of how to help with boredom, because my... and as, uh, as the people who are who work on boredom, you should be creative, because no one worked on that before. So I, I believe that you will be really successful. So, Josefa, do we have any last comments? <laughs> well, I think uh, I'm very, very happy because uh, it's the last day of the conference. We introduced our, <laughs> our society. So, from my part, uh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I will be looking forward to your... Um, emails to join the society but uh, be patient because i <laughs> i need to to upload your information from one person to one person so uh, be patient if uh, if i it take me some time <laughs> yeah and we probably should meet as a society in virtual space for yeah. the first time not only emails <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, uh, thank you very much for uh, your participation in all sessions, in all three days of uh, our conferencing. Uh, I hope that uh, it was illuminating and interesting experience. Uh, and uh, as the uh, chat uh, says to me that it might be the truth, uh, because you were very active at chat, so maybe we should as I said, publish the chat for, for participants. There are so many good thoughts about uh, discussions about many issues uh, raised during the conference, and there were plenty of them. Uh, so I'm very happy that we uh, succeeded in, uh, in uh, having uh, so many different perspectives of boredom uh, in the disciplinary mirrors, but also within each discipline, the new novel ideas uh, about boredom. And I'm very eager to see some papers out of this, uh, but this is uh, Josefa who will be uh, informing all of us about the uh, next step in this direction. Uh, yeah, because uh, maybe you know after her emails that she is an expert in editing uh, uh, books uh, for different publishers. So she has a lot of experience uh, with dealing with this stuff. 
<laughs> say an expert is to say too much, <laughs> but, but I can deal with these kind of things. I, I love uh, formatting references. <laughs> oh, them. I love it too, yeah. <laughs> so I love the edit editorial work. That's that's it. So thank you so very much for your attendance and for your patient being sad today again. <laughs> so. Sorry, can, can I just thank you, especially Marius and uh, Josefa, for organizing this event. I, I think it's really fantastic. I, I, I'm sure I speak for all of us. That was really well organized within the confounds of uh, confines of, of COVID and all. So just also, you know, massive uh, applause for you for, for doing this and bringing us all together. Thank you. Thank you. It was the first time with online conference <laughs> for Marius and I, but it was a success. I'm happy. So enjoy your Saturday afternoon, I think, uh, Saturday morning <laughs> for some. And we hope we will be in touch with, with you. Yeah, of course. Of course we have. So bye. <laughs>